Well, hi everyone. My name is Christina Bebb. I am a physical therapist out of Medina Hospital as part of the Cleveland Clinic. And I'll be talking to you about the benefits of physical therapy and Parkinson's disease. Um, so a little bit of thoughts into, I think what some people think physical therapy is uh, for those with Parkinson's disease. So I have some pictures here of what you or your family members, maybe your clinician or society thinks of when they think of Parkinson's disease and physical therapy. Um, but to me, and what Parkinson's therapy for, with physical therapy actually does um, are some of these pictures. So definitely a different um, visual representation of what we actually do. And I think to me, this is really what kind of I think of when I think of people with Parkinson's disease and exercise. So just to kind of backtrack on what the former school of thinking was, um, with physical therapy is we would see a more later approach into sending patients to physical therapy. So almost in those end stages or late stages of the disease, clinicians might take the wait and see approach, let's wait, maybe see till it gets worse, then send patients to physical therapy. Um, from the patient perspective, we would get more of the, well, not bad enough for therapy yet kind of school of thought. Um, and therapy was really mostly a, in the past looked to help compensate for what function was lost. Not necessarily to help improve function, but just compensate. And then from a therapy standpoint, the old school thinking and the old approach was therapy wasn't very challenging at that time. So it's almost too easy. Um, but really the truth now is, and what's changed is physical therapy can really help slow the progression of the disease through what we know are now the benefits of exercise. And really, I always say, just as important as the pills that are in your pill box, exercise is excellent medicine for, for people with Parkinson's disease. Um, well, exercise through research has been found to be neuroprotective. So protecting what's in your brain, protecting those neurons, those neuroreceptors that you use for your medicine. It's neuroreparative, so helping repair some damage that's been done in the brain. It's neuroplastic. So our brain can actually change with exercise. We see changes that occur in the brain. And our brains are adaptive. So they're adapting to the changes and the stresses that we put on it through exercise. So what we found now is the key is to start early, not wait and, wait and, wait and see kind of approach, but to start as early as possible. So when a patient comes in with Parkinson's disease in those early stages or the early diagnosis, um, there's a few things that we look to achieve as physical therapists. One is to just determine a baseline. So we want to kind of get an idea of where you're starting at. So if there are changes, we can look back and, and look at that baseline. Um, the number one thing I would say that we always look to achieve is to set up a very important home exercise program or get you involved in some um, group-based exercise program. That is by far the most important thing we want to do because again, what I just mentioned, exercise slows the progression. Um, also, we just want to educate you in Parkinson's disease. I get a lot of patients who don't really know much about the disease itself. And so, you know, no better way to learn how to combat something and fight something if we know more about it. And then as I mentioned, we're helping slow the progression of the disease. So when patients come to me and they're asking, you know, the benefits of exercise, um, I do usually recommend the well-researched forms of exercise with Parkinson's disease. So things like cycling, boxing, Tai Chi, dancing, drumming, yoga, all of those have focused on high intensity. Uh, so really challenging to the patient, uh, rotational motions, so twisting, which are things that can help with getting out of bed or turning when you're walking. And then a lot of those programs like boxing, Tai Chi, yoga, focus on balance, which is a huge complaint for my patients with Parkinson's disease. Um, sometimes we refer patients or recommend some uh, Parkinson-specific exercise programs, so the Lee Silverman Big and Loud programs, Power programs, Delay the Disease, Rock Steady Boxing, all of those are group-based exercise programs that are specific to those with Parkinson's disease. And when I have a patient who asks me, what's, you know, what's the best exercise? What should I do? I recommend one of two things. One, it should be challenging. Uh, we find that a lot of patients with Parkinson's really don't challenge themselves enough with exercise. 
And the research shows to see the benefits of exercise, it needs to be challenging. And the second thing I recommend is you should enjoy it. Um, exercise should be enjoyable and you're more likely to stick with something if you enjoy it. So then maybe if I get a patient with Parkinson's disease and they're in those, you know, those middle stages, if you will, not necessarily the early diagnosis, not late stages, but somewhere in the middle. Um, we're just gonna basically focus on what your deficits are, whether it be your walking, your flexibility, your posture, your balance, whatever the challenge may be. And based on what those deficits are, that's what we focus your home program on. So it's gonna be tailored specifically to you and your challenges. We do a lot of walking training, so what we call gait training, um, with a focus on the way you walk. So improving maybe the shuffling or not picking up your feet when you walk and dual task or multitask. Individuals with Parkinson's disease tend to struggle a lot with multitasking and especially with walking. So we incorporate that into our treatment. We work on a lot of functional training. So getting out of bed, um, getting out of a chair, things like that that people tend to struggle with. And again, just as before, we're trying to slow the progression. Now, maybe in the later stages, again, we're still working on those things like functional training, slowing the progression, um, but maybe we're looking at an assistive device or like a cane or a rollator or a walker. And I get a lot of pushback from my patients when that conversation comes up. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, that's a sign that I'm getting worse. You know, I don't wanna give in to the disease. And I look at it completely differently. I feel like a device actually helps you stay independent. If you're not using a device and maybe you're falling or you're limiting what you have to do because you're not steady, then to me, that's, that's a decline in function. But if you can use a device in order to allow you to be more independent, safer, prevent you from having to rely on someone else, that to me is not a decline, that's a stable function. Um, a lot of times in these later stages, we need to address safety. So maybe it's doing things in a safer way, learning to do things in a new way to keep you safe, or just in general, maybe working on things maybe that you shouldn't be doing anymore, talking about those things, having those conversations. Um, and a lot of times that's a very easy fix. Sometimes it's a hard conversation, but a realistic conversation as well. And then even in the late stages of the disease, physical therapy can be extremely beneficial. Um, we work on caregiver training, so training your family member or caregiver on how to help you most. Also, trying to prevent them from getting injured in any way when trying to help you. Um, again, still looking at assisted devices or other devices in the home that allow you to stay independent, uh, make life easier for you and improve your quality of life. We do a lot of work on breathing and posture. Those two things can be very helpful in especially things like swallowing and talking which can be problems, especially in the later stages of the disease. Um, we also want to work on preventing things like pneumonia and working on good breathing technique, good breathing exercises and posture can definitely help be preventative for those uh, diagnoses. Um, again, working on balance, safety, functional training, and even in the end stages, we still want to help slow the progression of the disease. So some take home thoughts. What can you take home from this presentation? Hopefully the number one thing you can take away is exercise, exercise, exercise. By far, if you get nothing else out of this, the importance of exercise is huge when it comes to um, Parkinson's disease. Sooner is definitely better than later. So no matter where you're at in stage of your disease, we wanna get you into physical therapy as soon as possible so that we can make sure that you're doing a, you know, your best job to manage and combat this disease. And then lastly, advocate for yourself. So maybe physical therapy hasn't been brought up as an option with your physician, with your primary care or your neurologist. Um, so be your own advocate. Um, if they haven't brought it up, suggest, hey, I wanna go to physical therapy. I, I wanna see what there is to offer. Um, especially if you can find a therapist that specializes in Parkinson's disease, that would be extremely beneficial. All right, thank you so much for listening to my presentation.